Shout out to the Chapin drumline there. <laughs> at, well, at the Field of Dreams in Las Cruces, the district championship was on the line. Las Cruces yeah. taking on Crosstown rival Centennial, both teams 5-0 and in district play. But for Centennial, they came into the game with a perfect overall record of 9-0. Yeah. and The Centennial Hawks looking to win another district title. But the Dogs, you know, they wanted just as much in the first quarter here. The Hawks up 7-3, to the handoff to Rios and... Uh, that line just parts like the Red Sea, and he is <laughs> off to the races. Centennial up 14 to three. Cruces gonna get back into it though in the second quarter. The dogs are down 21 to 10, but the handoff to Amaro. No one got, gonna take him down, extends over the goal line. He hits the pylon, oh, wow. but looking for the confirmation from the zebras, and yeah, there it is. Touchdown, made it 21 to 17. Hawks still with the lead. Then in the third quarter, Centennial gonna start to create some distance. Davis to Rios for the touchdown. 28 to 17 Centennial and then Davis gonna say you know what uh, I'm gonna keep it myself and they cannot bring him down at all he nothing but green turf in front of him he's headed for the house call that made it 35 to 17 Centennial and the Hawks are district champions once again they end the regular season 10 and 0 as they win it 42 to 24 good news though for Las Cruces is they are headed to the playoffs as well as they'll end uh, in second place in the district Go ahead and send things over to Paul Sikala as we begin our District 1-4A Division 1 coverage. What's going on, Paul? Hey, Adrian, what a season it's been for Austin High School as the Panthers came into the night against La Bui, gunning for their eighth victory in nine games. The only setback for Coach Eric Pichardo in Austin came in week two against El Dorado. Meanwhile, Bui High School was trying to get back to 500 with the victory, and with it being the weekend of Dia de los Muertos, it was certainly a festive night in the Segundo Barrio. Check this out, my friends. Right under the stadium by the concessions, Bui High School put together a Dia de los Muertos memorial, and some of the student body was actually dressing up as well. Hook me up with some pan muerto, porfa. Meanwhile, Austin High was hooking up fans, hooking them up with a sack by Alexis Vasquez on fourth and long. The Panthers get the ball right back. And how about Jeremiah Parrish? He'll be running players over, making it happen, Captain. That, folks, is a first down for Austin. And a bit later, the Panthers Parrish will take it in there like swimwear. Austin jumps out to a 14-0 lead. And on the ensuing kickoff, the ball is about to go over the head of the Bowie players. Check it out. And Damian Bias is like, uh, let me see. Uh, well, I don't want the ball. Um, you take the ball. <laughs> I got it, all right. Yep, that's Alan Mota gladly accepting it, but Mota taken down right away. Austin would continue to D it up, and what do you say? I say, hey, the Panthers move to eight wins and one loss as they pull away in the second half for the 41-7 victory. And heading down the border highway just north of Ciudad Juarez, where it was a showdown between two teams that had a combined record of, get this, 14 wins and just two losses. Oh, yeah. The matchup between Isleta and Riverside could have easily been our game of the week as well as Coach Joe Martinez and Isleta were hoping to continue their magical season and snag a victory against Coach Michael Sherman and Riverside. And the Isleta fan base representing strong on the road as they always do with the players sprinting on the field. But it'll be Riverside that gets the ball first and that means it is time for Carlos Rojas III to bust a move. Getting with the groove as if he has something to prove. First down for the Rangers. A bit later, the QB, Carlos Rojas III, keeping the ball and check this out. He'd be spinning and grinning all the way into the end zone. Riverside takes a 7-0 lead and off the kickoff. How about Michael Hawkes picking the ball right up and turns out to be a decent return for Isleta. Whatever the case, the Indians would stall an offense, but later score to cut the lead to 7-6. They didn't get that extra point. After that, Riverside started to rev it up. And in the end, Isleta barely falls just by four, 24-20, as the Rangers move to 8-1 on the season with the victory. So there you have it. Isleta still can remain positive for the playoff outlook because they have Bowie next week and should be able to take care of business with a victory over the boys from the Segundo Barrio. Meanwhile, 
Riverside can solidify a nine win regular season and playoff positioning with a victory next week at Fabens. Adrian Ochoa, B. Martinez, how's your energy? <laughs> I'm feeling good, Paul. I'm feeling Very good. Much. Trying to get up to your level, Doug. For <laughs> sure. I got too much. <laughs> well, congratulations again to the Austin Panthers and head coach Eric Pichardo as the Austin Panthers uh, yes. at least get a share of the yeah. district title. Well, the Irvin Rockets find themselves in the playoff mix in District 148, currently sitting in the fourth and final playoff spot. So they got to keep winning to keep their place. Mountain View on their heels now. Tonight, they played host to the Wildcats from Fabens, and uh, this one was all Rockets, as we could go ahead and get those highlights. Irvin's, this is Irvin's D'Angelo Garcia to a wide open Jamal Rocha for the touchdown. Yeah, then more Rockets, as you'll see. Garcia, again, he was just airmailing this one like a rocket, I guess you could say. Here we go. He's going <laughs> to air it out to Rocha, and uh, he's going to get taken down inside the five-yard line. And just a few plays later, just go ahead and punch it in, right? They're going to give it to Mike Medina for another Irvin touchdown and the Rockets soaring tonight as they win big final score here. You see it 62 to six. Well, in District 1-5A Division uh, T1, it was the Bel, Bel Air Highlanders who are winless this season, making their trip to Northeast El Paso to take on the Parkland Matadors. Now, Parkland starts the game with a successful onside kick as Ernest Crawford would recover the ball. Then from the drive that originates from the onside kick, quarterback Jesse Molina looking for the open man. He remains patient and then finds Jordan Reese in the end zone for the touchdown. But Bel Air coming back with a loud response. Quarterback Emmanuel Hernandez with the connect to Uriel Lopez. Now this time, Parkland with the ball. The Matadors run the ball with Lorenzo Mojica and who loses the ball and but then recovers it once again for the touchdown and the Matadors come away with the win 48 to 14. Well, let's go ahead right, get right into it. It's to our war, war of, the of the week. Here yeah. we go, another edition. You were out at this one. Yeah, so. for sure. So it was El Dorado against America's and this is the first time we were able to have these two teams this, uh, this season so far. So take a look. It was kind of a quick one, but go ahead, take a look. We're kicking off week 10 of War of the Week, and to my left, we have the El Dorado Aztecs. Let's go, Let's go. Aztecs! And then to the right of me, we have the America's Trailblazer. <laughs> All right, well, the winning team will get a $50 Visa gift card, okay? You guys ready? Yeah. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh, what an easy one. It's the America's Trailblazer. The Trailblazers are your Week 10 War of the Week champions. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Seemed kind of sleepy there a little bit yeah, at the beginning. I, they, I mean, they did admit it. They were like, oh, we need to wake up. So they, uh, they, at okay. least they acknowledged it. So. Okay. Well, you know who doesn't need to wake up? It's Zach. Oh. And, and, we, got, and we got <laughs> Zach's dance blitz coming up after the break. Stay with us. That's going to start off our next segment.